everybody, it's the Dental Assistant Tutor here, and we're going to go over radiology right now. Um, if you need to, grab a piece of paper and a pen and pencil so you can jot down some notes. Or when you're doing dishes or folding laundry, you know, or your husband or somebody's watching something on TV you don't want to watch, put a headphone in and just listen to it so you can remember these terms, okay, and other important factors. All right, I wish you plenty of luck. And uh, let's begin. So the words that you're going to need to know are radiology, rotenology, dental radiology, dental radiography, radiograph, radiation, radiolucent, and radiopaque. Radiology, science that deals with diagnosis therapeutic and researches application of high energy radiation. So radiology, when you're taking an exam, look for science that deals with diagnosis, okay? Remember, they can't get x-rays and be diagnosed. Rotenology, science that deals with application of x-ray on any field. Dental radiology is a branch of science that deals with the use of radiation, diagnosis of dental diseases. Dental radiography is the art of producing an image or picture for intra or extra oral structures on a dental film using x-ray. So either taking the Ceph or a Panorex. Radiograph. It is the shadow features, image, received on a radiation sensitive film, emulsion by exposure to ionization radiation directed through an area, region, or substance of interest, followed by chemical processing of the film. So you have to expose it to radiation, okay, ionizing radiation, and then you have to have chemical process on it, okay? It is basically dependent on the diphtile absorption of radiation directed through the heterogeneous media. Now there are a lot of big words in your radiology packet that you might be studying if you're one of my students or if you order something offline and there's just words you don't understand or maybe you're taking a radiology course somewhere else and you just, it went over your head, okay? Um, there are uh, app called Pronounce It. You can download it. It will help you with some of these words. Some of them you'll never see again after the exam. Some won't even be on the exam, basically. Um, we're going to do a practice exam in a little while, so that will help you understand what kind of questions will be on that exam. So stay tuned to the end of this video for that. Radiation. It is the process of emission, propagation, and transmission of energy by atoms in the form of waves. Radiolucent. Objects that permitting the passage of radiate energy with relativity little attenuation by absorption and appears black. Remember that. That is a test question. Radiolucent is something that just it goes through um, and it's darker. A pair of black on the film such as silicate restoration, pulp tissues, gingivo, and carrier lesions. Okay, that's how they can diagnose if it's decay in approximately between the teeth because it shows up a little darker in between. Another definition of objects partially or wholly penetratable by the rating rays the image of such a material on the film ranges from dark gray to black. Basically, in uh, our terms, radiolucent. It's dark and it can uh, penetrate the soft tissue, anything that is soft tissue in the mouth, and decay. Radiopaque is it's been, it's stopped. It's white. Uh, objects that observe x-rays and appear white on radiographs such as amalgam, restorations, enamel, and bone. Another definition object that not freely penetrate by radiation. 
or objects highly resistant to penetration by the Rayton rays. The image of such a material appears in the film within a range of gray to white. So if it's light gray to really white, uh, chances are it's a filling, you know, a composite filling is not going to be as white as maybe a gold crown or a silver filling. So just know when you're looking at the x-rays, you can tell that there's a filling, a crown, a root canal, um, an implant, a post, by it being stopped by radiopaque. Even brackets show up, radiopaque. Okay, it's been stopped, can't go any further, it's going to be all mass right there, which is white. Radiolucent, it goes straight through, um, and that is the what? Soft tissue. Alright, here we go. Pay attention. Clinical exam and radiographs, diagnosis and treatment. Radiation physics. Radiation physics. Anatomic structure. Atom is the fundamental unit of any particular element. The basic unit of elements. Okay? So, this is the atom. It is composed of a central nucleus in outer orbit, which space at a definite distance from the nucleus and are identified by letters K, L, M, N, O, P, Q. Okay, just know that the atom is this, it is the basic unit of elements. Electrons are negatively charged particles that orbiting shells. The central nucleus is composed of two kinds of particles, protons and charged neutrons with no charge. Protons plus charge and neutrons. Neutrons have no charge. The protons have a charge, okay? Do you get that? Protons, they are charged. Neutrons are not charged. Since neutrons have no charge, the magnitude of the charge of the nucleus will depend on the number of protons, anatomic number, which are equal to the number of electrons. Let's see here. I want to show you this. Atom, electrically stable. Okay? This is the nucleus of the atom. The center of the atom. These are the negative, no charge. Okay? Electric force, attraction between protons and electrons. You got positives and negatives. Central fugal force pulls electrons away from nucleus. Central fugal force it pulls electrons away from nucleus. This you don't need. Nature of radiation. Ra radiation may be either corpuscular radiation or electromagnetic radiation. Electromagnetic radiation. Let's talk about the electromagnetic radiation. It is a type of radiation form of units of pure energy, which are propagated in the form of waves as a combination of electric and magnetic fields. <coughs> Excuse me. It is made up of pure energy propagated in a form of waves with no mass or charge. It is generated when the velocity of an electric charged particle is altered. I can't say that word, guys. I grew up with a speech problem, but this is helping. Um, they travel in a straight line with the same speed of light. Okay, so as soon as I shut that off and turn that back on, that's how fast the radiation is going. Okay? And remember, once the radiation hits matter, you know, it hits the tooth, 
it hits the computer in the room, whatever it hits, it's been stopped. Okay, it's not floating around. This is the wavelength, okay? The shorter the wavelength, the stronger it is. Remember that. Wavelength is the distance between two crests of bottoms of two successful waves. Okay? In between, you see? The wavelength. Frequency is the number of cycles or waves emitted. Wavelength and frequency. Speed of wave. See? It's shorter. And this one's longer. Faster. Longer. More radiation. Less radiation. According to the wavelength, radiation can differ in their properties. Short wavelength or long wavelength. The short wavelength increase the frequency, increase the energy accompanied with increase the power of penetration. The x-rays will term hard radiation, which is characterized with low power of absorption into matter and low ionization. Okay? Do you understand that? The short wavelength increases the frequency increases the energy accompanied with it the stronger the shorter the better okay hard radiation which is characterized with low power of absorption into the matter of low ionization the long wavelength decreases frequency decreases the energy accompanied with it decreases the power of penetration the rays are termed soft radiation, which is characterized with high power of absorption into the matter and high ionization radiation. So let me show you guys, okay? With Bob over here, you can see part of him right now. If my PID is right up here, that is going to be a shorter wavelength and a better film. If my PID, which is your position indicating device, I'm sure that's the test question, it is your ring, okay, uh, and it is the, the cone to the x-ray unit, okay? When you have those circle to circle line up, and you have the cone out here further, the ring, also, well then, because you didn't want to push it forward, and don't be on the cheek when you push it, but be pretty darn close, okay? Don't be on the patient's face like that, where you're moving them, okay? Have it close. And then that would be a better x-ray. But if you go further, then that is a long wavelength, okay? And the radiation going to the tooth is going to show up lighter. Less radiation, okay? I hope that makes sense. I know radiology is very difficult to understand, but we're going to get through it together. Uh, when you get bored and you're looking around, just hit the like button. Okay, so highest energy, shortest wavelength, highest frequency highest energy, okay, that one, then it gets a little weaker, and then it's longer, okay, arrange in ascending order according to their wavelength, okay, what they'll probably ask you on the exam is not each one, but they'll say is a gamma ray, stronger than a microwave ray or radio ray, okay? Um, arranged in a setting order to their wavelength. Cosmic rays, gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet rays, visible light, infrared, microwaves, radio, radar, TV, and waves. TV waves. Here is a radio. Very weak. So everything we're around, we're around radiation, okay? Um, TV, when you're sitting there watching TV, probably our cell phone lies within here, and it's getting stronger day by day with the newest electronics. 
Some people actually wear sunglasses doing videos. I've seen that. Um, I'm not just there yet. And I should be because over time, you're standing in front of a radio. You're waiting for the microwave to get done. You're standing in a room with light, constantly getting radiation. Think about that, okay? Then you stay in the room with the patient and hold the film in the mouth, and you're getting that much radiation. Well, here's the thing, guys, students. All of this radiation of any kind is being held in your body, okay? And we're going to get across that here shortly, but it's just being accumulated in your skin cells, your body, your organ, okay? And over time, that can cause you many issues down the road, okay? In latent period, okay? So, be careful staying in a room with a patient or an x-ray. Have the parent do it if it's a child. X-rays. You're going to need to know who started x-rays. That is William Conrad Rankin. 1895. He first discovered x-rays. The professor of physics and director of physics institute at the University of Würzburg in Bavaria. This is in everybody's textbook. I don't care if you have the Pearson's dental assistant textbook, the Bird Robinson modern dental assistant book, or even the eighth edition of the modern dental assistant textbook, okay? They all have good discs in the back of them. They all have radiology in the chapters. Use that to fall back on if you attended a program, okay? Hence the term rank and raise, often applied to the mechanical generated of x-rays. He won a Nobel Prize for his discovery of x-rays, okay? Rankin called the x-rays after the mathematical syndrome symbol X for unknown, okay? X-rays. X means unknown, okay? X-rays of Bertha Rankin's hand. Rankin soon found that the photographic plate were sensitive to newly discovered rays. He convinced his wife to participate in an experiment. And being a good wife, she did. Uh, Rankin placed her hand in a cassette Cassette, kind of like a pan, loaded with a photographic plate. He then aimed the activated cathode ray tube at her hand for 15 minutes. Imagine that short wavelength right there for 15 minutes. When the image was developed, the bones of her hand and the two rings she wore were clearly visible. Within two weeks after Rankin was made his discovery public, the first dental radiograph was made by German dentist Otto Walkoff, who placed in his own mouth small glass photographic plates wrapped in rubber dam and exposed them for 25 minutes. So Otto Walkoff made the first uh, dental radiograph. Early x-ray machine, arrow points to the live electrical wire. Look, it's just there. That's scary stuff back then. Definition of x-ray. It is a type of electromagnetic radiation characterized by wavelengths between approximately 1A and 10 minus 4A. They are invisible, penetrative, especially at high protein energies and travel with the same speed as visible light. They are usually produced by bomb bearing a target of high atomic number with fast electrons and a high vacuum. In brief, x-rays are a form of pure energy. Units belong to electromagnetic spectrum characterized by having a very short wavelength and having the ability to produce shadiness or images of the body tissue. Properties of x-rays. They have a short wavelength. 
They have a selective penetration absorption power. It affects photographic film's emulsion. It causes certain substances to fluoresce. They cause ionization of atoms. They have biological damaging effects. Maybe a symptomatic effect such as skin burns, erythema, or cancer or genetic effects. Know the risk. They travel in a straight line in wave motion. Short waves are about 1 to 100,000 of the light. Invisible can be felt, smelled, or heard. It cannot be felt, smelled, or heard. Weightless mass, less, and changeless. So it doesn't weigh anything, it's invisible, it has no effects in that matter. They cannot be focused or collected by a lens. They cannot be reflected by a mirror or by fluids. They cannot be divided by a magnet. They can deflect on heavy metals by divided into a new liner. So just know, once radiation hits, it's there. Samples of an x-ray machine. X-ray machine consists of you have the head, this is what you need to know. The head of the x-ray is the tube, cathro anode. Accessories, filters, chromometers, and cones. The timer, automatic and manual. There's the x-ray tube head. Be careful when you're turning this all around, trying to get to the right position when you gotta go from one side of the chair to the other. Remember, there's wires inside this pole. Okay, and you want to make sure that you don't twist the turn because you'll be twisting the wires inside and you can snap them, right? Um, expose yourself to radiation probably. Also, keep in mind that the shorter the PID that you see at an office, the less radiation uh, is going to be scattered and closer, the better for the film to be better, okay? The x-ray to look better. Um, also, if you see a square one of these, that is the same size, same shape of a film. It's ideal when it's square. Remember that, okay? Let's keep going. The support arms. This is where I was talking about with the wiring inside and the tube head. Now, some people put the plastic headrest covers over it or they actually order the, um, the tube head covers for it. Some put little plastic... Uh, cover all tape right here to protect the buttons when they're pushing them. That's up to you. Remember, if you don't cover it up, make sure you wipe it and because it's electronic, don't over wipe. Timer, exposure time adjustment. Up, down, up, down. Manual timers, direct type and old x-rays machines. The exposure is controlled manually like a clock alarm. An exposure will stop only if the operator stops pressing on the button. So once you push that button, take your finger off, okay? And you can probably tell your patient to go ahead and open it up and have them hold it with their lips so they don't drop it on the floor. Um, kind of like, you know, just open like that because when they're biting down on it, it can cause tears to their eyes if it's on the soft tissue. So, the sooner you can get it out of their mouth, that'll be fine. Old school timer. The head of the x-ray machine is consists of two main parts, tube and accessories. The tube, the tube is excavated glass tube. With two arms are or electrodes extending into two opposite directions, which are the cathode and the anode, okay? So you need to know that. The glass tube, okay, excavates uh, two arms, 
which is electrodes extending in two opposite directions, which are the cathode and the anode. The tube is excavated for two reasons. This will prevent collision of the moving electrons with the molecules of the air, and this excavation will prevent oxidation and burnout of the filaments, the little spring inside. Okay, so this is your filament. We'll go through it more. But this is the inside of the tube head. This is the glass tube right here. You got the anode and the cathode, the negative and the positive charging together. Cathode is a negative electrode of the tube, which serves as the source of electrons. It consists of two parts, filament and focusing cup. Okay? The focusing cup is right here. And then the filament is this. Filament is made of the tungsten coil, which is 0.2 centimeters diameter and one centimeter or less in length. Tungsten is used because it has a high melting point, so it can withstand the high temperature accompanied with the process of X-ray production. It has a high atomic number, which denoting a high number of protons resulting in a high number of electrons. A lot of mumble jumbo there, guys, I understand. So just recall, tungsten is used as a melting point, okay? The filament is made of the tungsten coil. Focusing cup it is negatively, the tongue tied, is negatively charged, concave, reflective cup made of molybdenum act as a focusing to the electrons to a narrow beam to fall on the target. The high negative charge of the cathode repels the negativity charge electrons. Thus, this cup collects the electrons and repels them to the A node attachment stem. Electrons emission. Release of electrons from the hot filament, which is that coil, when current flows after dispersing the exposure switch, the button, okay? It's hot. The hotter the filament gets, the greater the number of electrons that are released. A node. It's consisting of two main parts. A, target. B, copper head. There's your A node. This is the tungsten target right here. This is the side view of the PID, the copper head with inside of it. In the front view, if you ever look inside of the, the PID, if you turn it this way, um, you will see the target right there. Now don't push the button while you do this, but this is if you do pediatrics and you gotta get a film. Um, little small tip off the subject here, but a uh, little fun tip tell little kids there's a little person inside there that's taking your picture and have them look inside the PID. But like I said, don't don't push the button. I didn't say push the button. Making that clear. Target. It made up of a tungsten due to it has a very high atomic number. It has a high melting point. It has a very poor thermal conductivity. Copper head, and not a snake. <laughs> Due to the poor thermal conductivity of the tungsten target, it is embedded in a large block of copper. Uh, don't recycle that. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Which is a good thermal conductor, so it allows proper dissipation of heat, which accompanies the process of the X-ray production. There you go. So it hits it, they come together, they come out. They hit the target. I want you guys to be able to see that pretty good. 
So here we go, okay? You have the insulating oil. You have the metal housing. You have the excavated glass right here. You have the copper head right here. The copper head's on the right side. The filament and focusing cup is on the left side. If you open up your radiology book or your chapter in one of your dental assistant book, uh, pause this video, look it up. You'll go along with the video with me, okay? If you're not already doing that and highlighting in your book these key words. 60 to 90 kbps. It's coming out. It's going around. It comes out. This is the useful beam, okay? Production of x-ray terminology. Volt, Voltus, Amper, Transformer. Volt is the unit of electrical pressure or electric motive force necessary to produce a current of one ampere through a resistance of one OHM. Highly doubt this is going to be on the test. But, Volt, remember this, it is the unit of measuring the potential difference of a charge to move from one electrode to the other. Okay? Volt. It moves from one to the other. Voltress. It is potentially or electromotor force of electric, electric charge expressed in volts. Or the potential difference between two electrical charges, e.g. between cathode and anode. Okay? Voltress. Remember, the voltage is the potential difference between two electric charges, between cathode and anode. And remember, volt is the unit of measuring of the potential difference of a charge to move from one electro to the other. Don't get them confused. Ampere is the practical unit of quantity of electric current equal to a flow of one column of per second, or the flow of 6.25 times 1018 electrons per second. Highly doubt you need to know the, of the amounts, but ampere, you probably will need to know, it is the practical unit of quantity of electrical current equal to a flow of a kilometer per second. Bottom line. Transformer, it is an electrical device which increases or reduces the voltage of alternating current by mutual induction between primary and secondary coils. Step-down transformer, a transformer in which the secondary voltage is less than the primary voltage. Step-down. So you got the primary and you got the secondary. The step-down is less. Step-up transformer, a transformer more than meets the eye. I'm just kidding. Gotta wake you guys up. Pay attention. A transformer is which the secondary voltage is greater than the primary voltage. Okay? Step up or step down. The motion or promotion. And hopefully you get a promotion by having us. The principle of x-ray production. When an electric current, which composed of a stream of negatively charged electrons, have a kinetic energy. It passes through a filament or a wire. It will be heated so the orbiting electrons within its atom, remember those, the atom, okay, when inside, be given from the heated wire or the filament. If these electrons suddenly stop, they will lose the accompanying kinetic energy and convert it into heat and X radiation. Application of this principle on dental x-ray machine. The step up down transformer will decrease the electric current into 8 to 12 volts. The step up transformer will raise the potential difference between the cathode and the anode by raising the voltage into 60 to 7 kV. There you go. Tube of the x-ray machine. The glass tube is in your book. The x-ray machine components, all right there. Accessories, filters, kilometers, cones. 
filters, a thin sheet of pure aluminum placed in the way of the x-ray beam. At the end of the x-ray tube, in order to improve the quality of the beam. So that pure aluminum helps make quality beams, which will help make quality x-rays, okay? The x-ray beam is heterogeneous in characteristics containing a ray of different energies, okay? So hydro, remember, a bunch, different energies. This is your PID. This is old school, guys.